Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon Wynn, this critical failure. So I'm doing this one on the way to work. I had to wake up early just to go to Richmond and do a lot of BS then uh, to get some stuff handled. But we are on the Drow Shadow Blade. The, I had to read the little thing about it. Uh, Drow Shadow Blades are assassins, uh, murderers. They are the, uh, I guess you could say like the rogues, uh, assassins. Uh, archetype. They slink in the shadows, running errands between cities and houses and stuff like that. Uh, they track down people who steal uh, valuable information and or prize possessions from a house or, and try to leave the city or of the entire city of itself. They protect the city from invaders and enemies of the drow and most importantly they take out rivals within the opposite house. Whatever their task is, they do so in stealth and secrecy. They also are infused with a demonic magic, shadow magic, into which it's a demis uh, demonic ritual into which they sacrifice a demon, a lesser demon, and somehow magically keep it from reforming and make a shadow demon, to which they can try, it's a variant, and they can try to summon it with 50% chance of success. If it fails, they take 1d10 psychic damage, average 5, but if they do summon it correctly, it appears within 60 feet of the summoner, and it acts as an ally, and it can't summon other demons. It stays for 10 minutes until it or the summoner is destroyed or called off as an action. I would say bonus action, because why the fuck not? Now, the Drow Shadow Blade. Sorry about that is a medium humanoid, it's an elf, and it's neutral evil. I'm surprised, because I keep seeing these things as chaotic evil, like in the actual books. It's an AC of 17, studded leather. It's an average hit point of 150, 20 D8 plus 60, and a movement speed of 30 feet. It's a strength of 14 plus two, dexterity 21 plus five, constitution 16 plus three, intelligence 12 plus one, wisdom 14 plus two, and charisma 13 plus one. Its proficient saving throws are Dexterity, Constitution, Wisdom, which are 9, 7, 6, respectively, which gives it a plus 4 proficiency. And its proficient skills are Perception and Stealth, which are 6 and 9, and its senses are Dark Vision up to 120 feet and Passive Perception 16. Uh, it speaks Elvish and Undercommon. I would say it could speak... Uh... Fuck, what is it? Demonic, demonic. Fuck, Abyssal, that's what it is. I couldn't remember the fucking thing. I, I would say it can also speak Abyssal, or at least understand Abyssal. Uh, and it's a challenge rating 11, 7,200 XP, Fey Ancestry. So it has advantages against being uh, charmed, and it cannot be put to sleep again, uh, with any magical uh, way. Uh, and magic can't put it to sleep. That's what it says. It has an eight spell casting. Its uh, spell casting ability is Charisma with the spell save DC of 13, and it can cast Dancing Lights at will, and once a day it can cast uh, Darkness, Fairy, Fire, and Levitate on itself only. Uh, it knows Shadow Step, while in Dim Light or Darkness, the Drow can teleport as a bonus action up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space it can see. Uh, that's also in Dim Light or Darkness. It then has advantage on the first melee attack it makes before the end of the turn. Sunlight sensitivity, so if it's uh, within sunlight, all attack rolls that it has are at disadvantage, and any perception checks, I think it's perception? Yeah, any perception checks uh, that rely on psych recite are also at disadvantage. It has multi-attack, hold on one second, let me readjust my phone here. Uh, it has multi-attack, so it makes two attacks with its uh, shadow sword. And if the attack hits and the target, hold on, let me switch to the other one, it's clear. Uh, if the target is within 10 feet of another, or within three feet of darkness created by a shadow sword. Hold on, I don't understand this. Within 10 feet of a darkness, that is a three, of a three foot cube of darkness created by a shadow sword on a previous turn, okay, that makes sense, the drow can dismiss the darkness as an action, or dismiss the darkness and cause a target to take 
2166 necrotic damage. The drow can dismiss the darkness in this way no more than once per turn. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense now that I actually read it fully. Because it, it says that before it actually gets to the actual attack. Now the actual shadow sword, uh, it's a melee weapon attack plus 9 to hit reach at 5 feet, 1 target only, average 8, 1d6 plus 5 piercing damage, or 10 3d6 Oh, plus 3d6 uh, necrotic damage. I honestly thought it was uh, a long sword. Uh, and 10 3d6 poison damage. So it does both. That's incredible. Uh, the drow can then fill a unoccupied space within 5 feet. Oh, it's, that says 5 feet. I thought it said 3 feet. Within 5 feet with a 5 foot uh, with a 5 foot cube, the target uh, within the uh, five feet of the target, sorry, uh, the target with uh, magical darkness, which remains for a minute. So basically, if it hits something within five feet of that target, it makes a five foot cube of darkness, and then it can do that, like uh, destroy the darkness and make them take uh, extra damage. And it has a hand crossbow, which is a, a ranged weapon attack. Of course, I don't do the uh, advantage at thirty feet or uh, regular at thirty feet disadvantage at one hundred twenty feet or more. I don't do that. I say within 120 feet, you can you can hit it normally. Uh, one target only. It's average 8, 1d6 plus 5 piercing damage, and the target must exceed a DC 13 constitution save or be poisoned uh, for an hour. The sa if the saving throw fails by 5 or more, the target remains... Uh, the target is uh, put unconscious while poisoned in this way. The target remains unconscious if it takes damage for another creature takes an action to shake it or regains consciousness if someone uh, attacks it or uh, shakes it. That, that's my bad. I could not tell. Sorry, I had to take pictures of it and the, my other phone's cracked and it's just like really not showing it well because I somehow got a couple more cracks. So that's a little bit harder for me to notice. But thank you guys for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully I can bring you some uh, more videos here soon. Uh... I was supposed to do one yesterday, but obviously we know how Sunday works. I don't do anything. And it's been like a week or more since I've done a guitar video, so I gotta get on that. I've actually been writing more music, and uh, Chip and I actually are about to finish one of our songs, uh, hopefully here soon. I will be putting that as my next video, because I actually do deeply care about that. Uh, I've been trying to write and learn. Uh, practice basically what I do have and make more stuff I've been really focusing on that but yeah that's for my guitar channel if any of you uh, do watch that but thank you guys for watching I do appreciate it please leave a like and subscribe as I bring you more content into the future D&D uh, &D content usually but uh, thank you guys for watching uh, please show this to your friends you know I know I'm driving and everything but hey it's whatever I'm trying to get some content out there I saw something on about J uh, with Jared Dines that actually made me feel uh, like I actually should make a video today while I'm uh, driving. But thank you guys again. I really do appreciate it. Please have yourselves a fantastic day. See ya.